Hi, I'm Brian Lane, Senior Product Manager of Imaging Software at Schneider Electric. In this video, we're going to go over the object counting analytic. Now, what you're going to want to do is get to the, the web GUI of the camera, whether you're using a Spectre HD, a Thermal, or a Serix camera. Once you're there, you want to select Settings, then Events, then Analytic Configuration. Now, you should have your profile already set up, and you should have the scene already calibrated. Now, if you're not quite sure how to do this, please watch the video on profiles and calibrating scenes. In this video, we're going over object counting. So under Select Behaviors, choose Object Counting. And under Setting for Object Counting, make sure you select Activate Behavior. You should also make sure that your profile is running. Now, the object counting behavior calculates the number of objects that enter a user-defined zone. This behavior might be used to count people at a store entrance or an exit or inside a store where traffic is light. It might also be used to monitor vehicle traffic on highways, local streets, roads, etc. Now, what we're doing in this scene is we're using a Spectre HD that's already had a preset assigned directly above a door. And we're going to be counting the number of people that are walking out the door. Now, whenever you set up a scene for object counting, what you want to do, especially for detecting people, is try to install the camera as high as you can pointing downward. The more downward the camera is pointing, the better job the analytic will do counting people. Now, as far as cars, um, slightly different. If you're, if you're calculating cars, you can still get away with with a, a side view, for example, or a side camera. Okay, so now what you're going to want to do is look at the uh, three buttons here on the side. Now you can draw a rectangle, a polygon, or a line. In this case, we're going to go ahead and, and click on the line, and we're going to draw the line directly across the curb right here. It's going to say Zone 1. Now you can leave this as Zone 1, but under the uh, analytic feedback page, if, you're, if there's a number of different analytics, you're going to want to know what this analytic was. We know it's under the eStore profile. We know it's under activate behavior. We're going to call this the door exit. Okay, underneath it, it says direction. It's, it's uh, defaulted to all. But what you can do is choose a specific direction of where the people are walking. So I don't really care how many people come into the building. I'm concerned about how many exits. So I'm going to select this button here. It's only going to go and count people that are leaving the building, not coming in. The next thing is enable alarm. It's already checked. And what that is, is this will generate an alarm that will be received by the head end. You set up your head end to do whatever you want when the, you actually receive an alarm. So, for example, if you, you, uh, you might have it set up to start recording, close a relay, put a red box around a, vi a video window, for example. Or you can set it up as a source and a handler to have the camera run some kind of an action. The next thing, it'll say alarm at, and it's defaulted at zero objects. That means that it won't send an alarm at all when someone crosses across this uh, this line here. Now, I might want to set it to one, so at least I can check to see if the object tracking is uh, working correctly, the object counting is working correctly. The, uh, the next thing here is alarm severity, and what the alarm severity is is to uh, let the head end know how critical the alarm is. So, so based on this, um, it will generate an action. So there are four possible choices. I might choose normal, for example, but if the head end is set up to only res to only respond to critical alarms, uh, it won't receive a normal alarm. The next is dwell time. This defines the time in seconds that the alarm triggered zone turns to a normal status. Okay, five seconds is the minimum, and you can go up from there. The last thing on here is reset counter on alarm. Now what this is for is if you have an alarm at 
for instance, every 20 objects. So every 20 objects, it will send an alarm to the head end. When that happens, you can have it reset the counter after every 20 objects. So the next thing on here, you'll see there's two buttons. Uh, one is a rectangle for an excluded zone, and there's a polygon for an excluded zone. Now these are zones that will be ignored by the behavior. Now if I'm having issues with the traffic for some reason um, coming through the street triggering a problem with my analytics, I absolutely could go through here and choose an exclusion zone. The last thing you'll need to set is your object size filters, which is the button down here at the bottom. Some other analytics may use an object size filter, but they may have only a minimum and maximum object size. For the object counting algorithm, on the other hand, there are three filters. You'll need to set not only a minimum and a max, but you also need to set an average. The reason for setting an average is if there are three people together in a scene, just for example, the average size will detect this as three, not just one. So what you're going to want to do is if you have a live object, a person for example, that's best to use them in the scene, but you typically can get away with guesstimating. So in this scene, I'm thinking an average object size will be about so, a minimum object size about so. I want to make it large enough so that it's not detecting a, an animal walking through the scene, for example, a bird or a squirrel or something. The, mo the maximum object size is typically no bigger than this in this particular scene. Okay, now you may have to play around with the, uh, the calibration here of the different object sizes if you're having difficulties with the object counting. But other than that, you simply make sure that your profile has, is running. You make sure that you've activated your behavior and you save. The next thing you want to do is click over here on Live. This will take you to the, uh, the live screen. You want to choose the primary stream down here at the bottom. And that will take you to select stream. Choose event stream. Hit select. And then what you're going to want to do is test your analytic to see if it's working properly. Now, what you're going to see are all the objects that have gone through the scene. So it's going to count and show you the number of people walking through the screen. So for example, in this particular scene, seven objects have been counted, two have walked through the door, and that, that now makes nine. So it actually has counted two people to bring you nine objects. Okay, so now you know your, your counting is working. You're gonna wanna do a lot of calibration to get the object counting to work correctly. So you're gonna wanna test it, check it, test it again, check it and test it until you get it correct. This is Brian Lane. Thank you.